What's up, everybody? Welcome to Metal Remains Backstage. I am Carlos in New York City, and today we have Jesse Trommer from Storm Ruler. How are you today, Jesse? Doing great, Carlos. I'm doing great. I'm happy to have you here and I'm happy to have this conversation about your music. I too. I am happy that you are here and I'm happy that I am here, Carlos in New York. <laughs> great. <laughs> the first question, it's probably the most, I don't know, the most serious one of the whole interview. And we just want to know what have you been listening to these days? Well, uh, it's funny you ask that. Um, last couple days, I've been on a hard kick with the Resident Evil 3 original soundtrack. So that's the, the PlayStation 1 game that came out in like 1998. Wow. Uh, and also a little bit of Resident Evil 2. Carlos won't know anything about that. Let me tell you uh, Carlos, talking. come on, man. You've never played Resident Evil? Ah, I saw okay. I saw the movies. I saw no, the movies. No. <laughs> In addition to listening to those a lot, I've been on a big kick with I love synth wave, which is kind of like a style that I'm sure you guys are familiar with. And my yeah. one of my favorite artists is this guy Dynatron. And uh I've been listening to him like nonstop. Great, yeah. great. I'm gonna check out that uh soundtrack, definitely. You should, you should. And uh, when you listen to it, picture yourself being pursued across the city streets of, of maybe New York. You know, you live in New York, so you understand. Picture yourself being pursued across the streets by hideous zombies and, and worse. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, he loves it. <laughs> Sacred Rights and Black Magic, your sophomore album, it's set to be released later this month, October 14, 2022. That's the perfect month, if you ask me. <laughs> perfect month is oh, this month. I have listened to it, and to be honest with you, it gives me goosebumps, and uh, I'm very excited uh, about uh, this record. <laughs> I'm glad to see it was goosebump worthy. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell us a bit about how was the composition and the recording process of this album? A lot of the music was written shortly after we had completed writing the music for our first record, Under the Burning Eclipse. So mm -hmm. it kind of got to the point where once we had the 10 songs or the, the nine songs that um, were on the first record, we were like, OK, let's this is this is it this is the first album right here you know like these songs are right but we did have some other ideas and we didn't want to like quench the fire so we like we did mm -hmm. start composing a couple of the others of the songs for the new record um like right thereafter to the point where some of them could have been on the first record maybe if we decided to go about it a different way um but the writing of sacred rights was yeah, it commenced not long after. And uh, when we when we were, you know, putting out the first album and uh, through Napalm and doing like the the handful of live gigs that we did for it, uh, we also had like the new record pretty much three fourths written, you know, and were had were excited to get that out too. So when the opportunity came along to put it out like a year later, we were like cool, let's do this, you know, while the iron's hot. And uh, we kind of finish mm -hmm. it up. You know, we like to write a song and then kind of let it marinate for a bit and come back and see if there's anything that should be tweaked, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, like, that that process kind of went down while we were touring for the first album and stuff. And, uh, you know, when the time came to record the second album and we had a, a, a time slot schedule, old it's just a matter of finishing it up uh, kind of deciding where we wanted to go with everything and uh it would, came came into place real nicely everything fell into place quite well so it was yeah the same same process we used for the first record to be honest awesome something that catches our attention is the fact that um on every song of the album there is a short interlude um whose idea was that uh, well, that was kind of both of ours when we were formulating how we wanted the first record to exist. You know, we were like, hey, it'd be cool to do something like this. Uh, 
you know, I've heard a few records in my day that have that same kind of idea and I always love it. Um, uh, sometimes, you know, it's fun if you're not, if you're not feeling in the most metal mood, but that's the record that happens to be in your C player or on pulling up on your phone, right. When you get in your car, sometimes it's fun to just, just listen to those tracks, you know, like for like right. a different kind of feel. And, uh, they serve well, uh, kind of on their own but also to uh introduce the next song to take you out of the first song and bring you into the next one you know so uh yeah. i compose the interludes uh you know right here in my studio and my sweet rig <laughs> interlude rig <laughs> and uh then for the second record we were like we need to have some acoustic guitar interludes as well you know and so we had we included some of those this time around the second record that was uh, something we wanted definitely wanted to do uh to you know kind of keep it fresh so mm -hmm. yeah it worked out well yeah it, it's a great idea in my opinion it builds up to the track and it creates like an ambience it prepares you for it for what it's about to come so i think yeah. it's a great idea yeah, and as I mentioned when you were like, oh, what are you listening to? Uh, I love synthy, spacey stuff. You know, like a lot of times if I'm driving around in my car or whatever, like I don't necessarily want pounding double bass metal attack, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times I kind of, I like to kind of zone out on like synthy, spacey stuff. And I'm always kind of like searching for it. You know, something that doesn't have much of a drum beat or if it does, mm -hmm. it's like a really slow kind of beat, which I love. Because that's almost like metal in a way when something's like, mm -hmm. you know, it's like a good tempo. And if you got a good spacey synth thing going on, I, I love that. Yeah, I can't get enough of that vibe, you know. So, right, right. Yeah. So maybe you must have liked the last album from Blood Incantation that was completely like that really i've heard of them it's a spacey synth album love it the latest one they released a few months back yeah it's full synth wow i'll have to check that out then that's cool going back uh to the questions on the interview that wasn't part of the interview <laughs> um, <laughs> uh oh <laughs> black metal is known for its aesthetic but you guys have decided to avoid using the traditional face painting um why is that well, I don't know. I, mean, I think the, I think it's just not really like what we're about, you know, like, I feel like the initial, the corpse painted method was, was introduced, you know, it was kind of a combination of like, uh, the guys loved the death idea that corpse paint conveys combined with, they all love kiss, you know, and they, it would have been tight to like put on some dope face paint. So, I mean, uh that's that's not really a thing that i that we've ever really been into i don't think it's really like needed you know like uh i don't like hate if a band wears it that's fine you know with lots of bands do but, uh but just, we don't really it's not really part of our idiom if you will mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh it's just not really in our in the cards for us it's like never once were we like oh we should wear paint or right. you know so it's like it's just not something that is needed for us, I guess, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When it comes to writing lyrics, um, what topics are the most interesting uh, for the band? Well, we like to delve into dark fantasy kind of stuff that is uh, conveyed through like video games, books. The first record, we have a song about the Malazan Book of the Fallen. And uh, on this new record, we have a song I wrote lyrics about the Stormlight Archive. But then we have lots of songs about the Dark Souls and Bloodborne, Soulsborne universe of ga video games, which are like black metal as hell. I, I, I guess you're not a big video gamer, Carlos, so uh, you don't know about Resident Evil, you're, which is you're, you're you're kind of a problem. <laughs> but uh, speaking yeah. my language. <laughs> uh, all right, Manuel. So you know about the Dark Souls and Bloodborne games. Hell yeah, my favorite saga of, of video games. I'm trying yeah, to get yeah. all the Platinums because I play on PlayStation. Not, so I have I, the I'm, Platinum and I have one Dark Souls 1, 2, 3 and Elden Ring and Bloodborne Platinums. Now, Sekiro... We're going to have that's... a little chat about that later on, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm down, man. I'll talk about that shit forever. You guys are forcing me to start playing those games because... You are not the first person that has come up with ideas for lyrics 
uh, or to write music based on video games. We have we are we are not artists and and. There's got to be lots of other bands who have done it. I, I, yeah, I, we yeah, are definitely it, not, you know. I mean, and, and uh, I mean, there's other probably. I, I, I mean, hell, like I knew a group of guys here in town that like wrote music about the Dark Souls games, you know, and like that's uh, just like uh, just something that lends itself super well to black metal lyrics and like I, I i guess we're like the first ones who got like discovered or something because i'm sure there's plenty of bands who, who have done it and uh there's probably plenty of bands who in in the existence of metal in the 90s and maybe early aughts who also wrote songs about a game or a book and you just don't really know if that's what it's about because they don't like maybe say it or whatever but i, I can't believe more people aren't doing it because i mean as manuel would i'm surely acknowledge Nothing is more black metal than the Dark Souls games. I mean, that is a black metal world right there. So I am definitely feeling the pressure to start playing video games now. <laughs> well, yeah. well, yeah, man. I mean, it's not it's yeah. not any video game, Carlos. It's that uh, that particular series of video games. Uh, they are like Lord of the Rings on steroids that you yeah, can in fact, I that you can play. I watched the Lord of the Rings movies again and uh, I hadn't watched them since like playing the shit out of all the Dark Souls games and as I was watching I was like wow man Dark Souls took so much from these movies you know like everything from the looks of the areas to like the rickety old wooden shanties and stuff like everything it's it's so cool you know mm-hmm. how it's such such an, an epic metal world to slog around and not to mention wield these huge swords and fight ridiculous demon creatures i mean right it's just metals against <laughs> all right now let's talk a little bit about the cover um who's the artist behind it and what it represents okay so uh giannis Nakos of remedy art design excellent artist super professional dude and we couldn't be happier to have someone like him helping us convey the ideas behind our music uh, via his awesome art. And uh, this particular cover, um, he sent us kind of a first idea, which is not far off from where it eventually turned turned into. Uh, and uh, we were delighted with the fact that it kind of rep- similarly depicted someone who kind of looked like one of the Elden Ring bosses, uh, Renala. Manuel, as I'm sure you've encountered her. And uh, it, it, it isn't like a picture of Renala, but it kind of looks like it could be Renala esque kind of character at a glance. And uh, we were like, that's cool, because I had just beaten Renala like, you know, like a week or, you know, not long before that. And uh, <laughs> uh, we just kind of uh, requested like a couple of tweaks as far as like some ideas we had that instantly we came up with when we looked at his first draft we were like "Ooh, what if we did this and wouldn't it be cool if there was this and it was just like a couple of tweaks you know and uh his second revision was pretty much the one we went with well i'm gonna awesome. have to listen to that because I, I enjoyed that fight quite a lot oh yeah definitely yeah if you if you take a look at it you'll you'll it, it does kind of resemble ranala so it's kind of cool and one of the uh colors of our vinyl variants is a bluish color that we named Lucarian blue. Oh wow. <laughs> so you're yeah. taking the, the whole concept of that. Yeah. In Elden Ring, I loved it as well. That was like the latest one I, I played. After that, I got back to Demon Souls. So yeah. oh, man. Oh, Demons. Oh man. Uh, that game. Oh, such a rad game. But it's so hard. And I was like, I want to know what's going on. I want to know more. But this great wall of dragons is driving me up the wall and uh yeah that, that game is an asshole uh don't play that one carlos okay uh, <laughs> all right it, it'll make you hate. Have... you'll be like ah you'll walk away it, it's interesting how this uh black metal music interview has become like a gaming interview <laughs> like now <the> video games. <laughs> yeah i hear you, I hear you. <laughs> Um, so Sorry. let's talk a little bit about the future plans for the band after the album has been released. Well, we have a tour with Cannibal Corpse and Dark Funeral in Europe. That's next year, starting in early March, uh, going through like the end of April. So we got that, which is going to be 
massive. Yeah. And, uh, and then we have a release show here in our hometown, which will be fun. We are going to Puerto Rico in December for a gig. Cool. That'll be cool. Playing down in San Juan in December. So we've got a couple of shows and then we've got that cannibal tour. And then it'd be nice to maybe slide something in between, you know, the pre cannibal tour, but the window is kind of closing on that. So we'll see what happens. Some, like I said, so there's, there's some potential stuff. So we'll see what happens. It's 16th of uh, March in Madrid with Cannibal Corpse, Dark Funeral. I'm going to be there, man. And we're going to talk I can hope, a whole I lot. I can count on you to be there, Manuel. We're going to talk a lot about Dark Souls, I'm sure. Yeah, put <laughs> put your summon sign down in front of the stage. And I'll I see will, I yeah. Can, uh, yeah, I'll <laughs> see if I can see it there. Great. Yeah, Manuel is, imp Manuel is impossible not to recognize. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice, okay, good. Now, that's it for today about the interview. Would you like to say some message to the people watching this interview online? Thank you, everyone, for uh, checking out the new record. And um, if you caring about the band's progress, uh, we hope to never um, stray from the path of you know, doing what we do and uh, hope to see uh, any all of our European fans on this next tour. It's going to be a big one and uh, come say hello and we'll hoist, uh, hoist a brew together. Great, great. We know the world will continue to talk about the impressive quality of work you guys are doing with Stone Ruler. And we hope to see you soon on the road. I'm sure you're going to make a tour here in the States and you will come to New, yeah, New we'll City eventually. Yeah, we'll be at some point. I can share it, Carlos. So uh, when so, I come uh, through, I would ask you a few Resident Evil questions. And uh, yeah, yeah. I have the answer. I'm like, where was the sword key? And <laughs> like, oh, it was, uh, it was. Uh, how do you, how do you get uh, these type of rounds? <laughs> what kind of gunpowders can be combined to make shotgun shells? Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> you got to know this stuff. Do you want to get through the residue? Yeah, I have to do my homework and I'll be waiting patiently for you guys to come down here. But until then, stay metal. My dude. Yeah.